we're going to first consider the situation where the parallel circuit is overdamped. Now by overdamped, that means that alpha squared minus omega naught squared is greater than zero, where alpha, you'll recall, was defined as one over two RC, and omega naught, the natural frequency of the circuit, was equal to one over the square root of LC. S1 and S2, we found, S1 and S2, we found to be equal to negative alpha plus or minus the square root of alpha squared minus omega naught squared. So we're looking at the case where alpha squared minus omega naught squared is greater than zero, thus the value under the radical is positive, and the two values of S, S1 and S2, are two distinct real values that can be calculated from the values of R, L, and C. So all that's left then for us to determine the, the response of this circuit is to determine the constants A1 and A2. Because there's two constants, we need two equations, and we have two initial conditions from which we can determine those constants. The first of those two equations can very easily be obtained by evaluating this expression at t equals zero, or v of zero, let's be explicit, zero plus, is equal to a1 e to the s1t, but t is zero, so e to the zero is one. So a1 times one plus a2, and similarly we have e to the s2t, t equals zero, so e to the zero again is one. Thus we have v at zero plus is equal to a1 plus a2, which we know to be equal to our initial condition, the initial voltage on the capacitor. Thus we have our first equation. The second equation is a little trickier. To get a second equation involving A1 and A2, we can differentiate this expression one time with respect to time. Or the derivative of V with respect to T is equal to A1 times the derivative of the exponential function term, which is just going to be S1E to the S1T plus a2 times the derivative of this exponential function, which is s2e to the s2t. Now, as we did before, where we evaluated this expression at t equals 0, the exponential terms went to or became 1, e to the, e to the 0 was 1. So let's do the same thing here. Let's take this expression, dv dt, and evaluate it at t equals 0 plus. When we do that, on the right-hand side, we have a1 s1 e to the 0 is just 1, plus a2 s2 e to the 0 is 1. Thus, we have a second equation involving a1 and a2, and the values s1 and s2, which we were able to evaluate from the values of r, l, and c. The trick here comes from the fact that it's not directly it's not easy and not directly possible. It's not possible to directly determine the value of the derivative of the voltage at t equals zero. This is saying how quickly the voltage is changing at t equals zero. It's not readily determined from the circuit itself. How do we get that? How do we get what this thing here is going to be equal to so that we can solve for a1 and a2? That's the trick. To get around that, that uh, impasse, remember that the current in a capacitor as a function of time is equal to C times the derivative of the voltage with respect to time. Or the derivative of the voltage is equal to I sub C divided by C. That's true for all time. If it's true for all time, it's then certainly true for the time, that one instant in time when t equals zero plus, if we evaluate this at t equals zero plus. Thus, we can come up with an, the value, we can evaluate the derivative at t equals zero plus indirectly by finding out what the current is at zero plus and dividing that by the capacitance. Now the question becomes, how do we get the current through the capacitor 
immediately after it switches. It won't necessarily be the same as it was right before it switched. You'll recall that when it comes to a capacitor, the voltage across the capacitor does not change instantaneously. But, in general, the current can and in general does change instantaneously. In other words, the current immediately after the switching in general will be different than the current immediately before the switching. So how are we going to do that? Well, it's not too hard, but it does require one more step. Let's start by writing a KCL equation at that top node. Let's define the current I sub R here. I sub C going down, I sub L going down like that. And the KCL at that top node then yields I sub R plus I sub C plus I sub L must equal zero. That's true for all time. Let's be a little more explicit. I sub R at zero plus plus I sub C at zero plus plus I sub L at zero plus must then also equal zero. That I sub C of zero plus is what we're attempting to find so that we can evaluate the derivative at t equals zero plus. Now, how can we get that? Well, the current through the resistor is equal to the voltage across the resistor divided by the resistance. Or V sub R, I, I, I sub R at zero plus will then equal V and the voltage across that resistor, because they're in parallel, is the same for all three of these. That's just V naught divided by R, our initial condition, which we can determine from the circuit. So the current through the resistor immediately after the switch is thrown is equal to V naught divided by R. We have then here also plus I sub C at zero plus. That's the quantity we're attempting to evaluate. And that's an L there. And then we have plus I sub L at zero plus. plus. Well, I sub L at zero plus is the same as I sub L right before the switching because you cannot instantaneously change the current in an inductor. Thus, I sub L at zero plus is simply I naught. And the sum of those three terms has to equal zero. Subtracting these two known values, from both sides, we can then determine that I sub C at zero plus is equal to negative V naught over R plus I naught. With that value, we can then determine our derivative. Our derivative, eva our derivative evaluated is T equals zero plus, which gives us this then. And we now have our second equation which is A1S1 plus A2S2 is equal to I sub C at zero plus divided by C, where I sub C at zero plus can be evaluated or determined from the initial conditions. We have one equation in, one equation in terms of A1 and A2. And we now have our second equation in A1 and A2. Again, S1 and S2 are known quantities, quantities that we were able to determine from the values of R, L, and C. I sub C of 0 plus we determined from the initial conditions. And we can then solve those two equations for A1 and A2, which gives us the two unknowns that we were looking for.